Hello, what is up guys? It is Keegan here, and I am back bringing you guys another episode of the Stuttgart Career Mode. In today's episode, I gotta actually click into the game. We are starting our Europa League campaign. We have two games here against Shakhtar Donetsk. Actually, not starting the campaign, starting the knockout stage. We have our two games against Shakhtar Donetsk. We play against Wuchen Gladbach as well. Bayer Leverkusen, Werder Bremen, Frankfurt in this episode. So a lot going on. But the biggest part of today's episode will be the start of the knockout stage. We're going to put a lot of effort into this tournament. Let's take a look at the other teams that are in the tournament. So Villarreal and Leicester, Monaco Standard Liège, Outlands Aspor uh, versus Real Sociedad. I'm pretty sure that's a Russian team. Uh, Young Boys versus Sevilla, Galatasaray, Lazio, Slavia, Praha, Roma, Braga versus Barcelona. They drop down. Looks like we have Olympiacos, Napoli, Ajax, and Wuchen Gladbach are also in the tournament. Kiev versus Arsenal, Leipzig versus Chelsea, that's a big one. A little sporting, Feyenoord, Benfica, Atalanta, Porto, and Frankfurt, and Athletic Bilbao. So definitely I think we did well getting Shakhtar Donetsk here, but this is not going to be an easy tournament by any means. I'm going to make a few rotations because that Gladbach game, we do still want to be making the Champions League. So we still have to take that game with the utmost importance as well. So an interesting subplot actually of this game is Dodo is actually playing his former club today. As you can see the changes I made. Valtzman and Endo draw into this game. I'm still going to play Guendouzi. He's been very, very good. Um, but I'm going to give Frank the rest in this and the away leg. Only because we need to make sure he's fully rested for the next game. This is the team Shakhtar playing with. Um, Kanopliyanka is a very, very good player. Mykon in midfield, so definitely some good players. Mareish up top is a very, very quality striker, so definitely a tough fixture, but if we can get away with an away goal or two here in Donetsk, then we should be sitting pretty comfortably for the rest of this tie. Oh, here's Nicholas Gonzalez. Oh, Guendouzi has put it into the back of the net. We had a little bit of an early defending to do. They were pushing off of Matteo Guendouzi, his first goal for the club. Great work between him, Luka Valtzman, and Nicolas Gonzalez. I didn't have any worries putting Luka Valtzman in for this game. I figured that he would have been doing just as good a job as Frank and Guendouzi. First goal for the club. Beautiful finish there. Pass the keeper, and we get that early away goal in this tie. Definitely some good news as we continue on. And you can see there, they actually had an injury uh, in the midfield there. I don't know if it was Macon that went down or or who it was. We'll probably see it here in a second. Uh, but they had uh, Detinio actually went down with an injury. So they're going to bring a player on for him. Oh, and there it is. Matteo Guendouzi, his second goal of the tie. What a finish that is from Mateo Guendouzi from Gonzalez down that wing right before halftime. And that's not going to end the tie, but that could very well put it out of reach for Shakhtar Donetsk. They've had another big period where they've been really putting the pressure on, but Mateo Guendouzi with his brace away from home should at least see us to a win in this game. Now the important part is to defend and make sure we don't concede and potentially let them into the next leg. And there it is. They have pulled one back. Just completely crossed my defense up there. I think that's Kopolenko has actually put them back ahead. I just was not defending properly in any way whatsoever there. I think Robin Koss should have gotten the ball here. Just held it up. Yeah, he should have gotten the ball away there. And Kemp just overcorrected for the mistake. And Kobal actually was transferred to Borussia Dortmund uh, earlier uh, this week. Um, has conceded the goal there. It's Kovalenko. He was actually the player who came on for Detinio uh, for the injury injury earlier. So they pulled one back here. So the tie's not over yet. Still have to work hard. Oh my god, an endo has gone through there. And the keeper has made a big save. Trubin there. Wow, Mangala, what a pass. I don't know why endo's the one. Getting on at the end of that, but great combination from our defensive midfield to get forward there. Let's see if we can get this on ahead of Kosh, maybe. Looks like we're not going to get that opportunity. See if we can send it back in. 
He's going to volley that. Wow, decent opportunity, but still not able to find that second goal. Or that third goal, rather. Oh, Mangala. There we go. Gonzalez from Mangala. The amount of times we've seen a Gonzalo score this series, it's no surprise. But that is the third away goal, and that might just be enough for us to see the next leg through. Magala's come on and changed this game in midfield. We brought him on for Guendouzi earlier, and just the amount of work he does just to break up the play, it's just so vital in this team. And Gonzalez, of course, eight goals in the Europa League. I mean, he's just going to score everything he touches. And there it is, Frank, 4-1. to one. Frank has come on for Luka Valchman, actually, before the third goal. And right there, he just puts a perfect shot past the keeper. 4-1, to one, and that truly should be the tie dead and gone. They have to score four goals now in the away leg to come back. And this is just a perfect pass, just perfect positioning. And we're going to take a big 4-1 win against Shakhtar Donetsk, and we are cruising through to the round of 16 in the Europa League. Good news that we can maybe rest a few more of our players for the next leg of this tie and use more of them against Muchin Gladbach, which is a very, very important match in our season. Let's take a look at actually where we are in the table. You can see that Barcelona, Roma, Lazio, Real Sociedad, and Monaco, all teams that had won their first leg in the Europa League. Kobo is happy with the team. As you can see there, this is the table as it stands. We're outside of the European spots, only seven points out of the Champions League and one point out of their Europa League spot. So definitely want to be beating Mucin Gladbach here. They are right on our tails. This is a very, very important game. Luka Valensman looks like he wants to play, and it looks like Stenzel's uh, development plan to get him to right back is going to happen. So we won't have to worry about him losing out on um, points, changing his position over there as we brought him on as well in the last game. So Luka Valtzman wants to play. We'll think about it. I might bring him on at halftime. Um, but definitely a team game I want to be using the full starting 11 for. Mangala was great. I think I'm going to go with the mangala Guendouzi combination. And let's see if we can get another win. All right. We are in the Stuttgart game. As you can see there, full starting 11 for us. And this is the Muchin Gladbach team. Zakaria and Newhouse still in the midfield. Liner, Vermin, Turam, Cardona, Vestergaard at the back. Definitely a very, very solid team, and it's going to be a tough game. But at home, definitely a result we should be getting. We need all three points if the Champions League is going to be a realistic goal, and we definitely want to make sure we get these points as often as we can, as the Europa League is only going to get tougher from here. And there, a save off the Nicolas Gonzalez shot. But you know who, Wemen Getuka, coming off the right hand side and puts that away easily on the rebound. The chances have been hard to come by, but we, it's going to take one of those goals to get that win here today. Wish he would have taken that with his left, but good thing Wemen Getuka was there. Eight goals in the league. He's starting to get a few more now, which is nice, and making that goal tally just a little bit more respectable. I know that even though he's a winger, it's Wemme Gatuka and the amount of goals he scored in the last season, you know, the expectations are sky high for him, but still certainly a very, very good season for a winger's standards. And there is Gonzalez from Dodo, 2-0, that's his 20th goal of the league campaign. What a season it has been for Nicolas Gonzalez. He is just so good up front. Man, so people have been telling me to move him to the wing, but man, there's just no way I'm going to take him out of that striker position. 20 goals. He is only going to get better from here. And to think we could actually score 30 with him in a Bundesliga campaign is insane to think about. Oh, what a pass. Matteo Guendouzi. Can we get him his third goal of the episode? No. Wow. <laughs> oh, my God. You can tell he's a, mid a defensive midfielder because he absolutely scuffs that shot. 
Always bending away from the goal there. And we have been under siege, so that would have been great to get that third goal. Hopefully, there's too uh, little time for them to get that those two goals to get a point out of this game. But man, the... <laughs> would have liked to have that goal there. And that is the end of the game. Robin Hawks cross goes completely missing. But a big 2-0 win against... Borussia Muchen Glad back there and that will keep them off our tails as we push for the European places now It looks like there Luca Valtzman was happy. He got to play Tommy is happy that he's getting more opportunities um, And you know, that's just the nature of the fact that we have more fixtures are coming up He's just gonna get to play more often. That's just how it's gonna be with the squad rotation Let's take a look quickly at the table um, for not the Champions League. Oh, how are Leon doing? They are down to Manchester City. Uh, where is the the league? There it is. The league. So we are now actually in fifth place here, four points behind Dortmund. So we move a little closer, and we are in those Europa League spots. But with the form we are on, as you can see, 49 goals. That is insane. You know, we're, we're right up there when we're pushing a Dortmund. You can see there we have a better goal difference, and we've conceded about the same amount of goals. So, definitely a team that appears like we can catch this season. All right, we are here in the second leg, and it's been so long since I recorded this. I recorded the first half of, the, half of this episode, it feels like, about a month ago. And now I'm back here recording the second half. Going to try to finish this series, but as you can probably tell, life has taken a crazy turn. I'll do a video on that at some point, hopefully, in the next week or so. Uh, but this is the team. Valtzwitz starts, Zagre starts, uh, but otherwise the full starting 11. Mariah up top, Kanoplianka in there, Mykon, uh, Tete. I, that might be the Leon Tete. I, I'm not sure. I don't think so. Kovalenko behind him. So definitely some quality players, but we won the away leg 4-1. So, we have four away goals, which basically means, as long as we don't concede four goals, we should be going through. So, I was considering maybe giving a more chance to some of my other players, but I didn't want any risk of potentially going out of this competition early. Oh my god, and they scored here early. I don't know how we managed to put that one away. What a crazy finish that is. Oh, they have pulled the one back here. 4-2 only. Uh, they still need four goals here uh, to have a chance. But an early goal is what they needed off the corner here. Let's see what happened here. Just Gwendouzi the header and then, wow, what a finish. No, Nobody was getting to that. Konoplyanka, he's only got one goal in the Europa League. Oh, but <laughs> this is still a crazy game. They still need four. But, you know, now the nerves start to pick in just a little bit more. Oh, what a pass out here. Robin Hack, third to Gonzalez. Luca Valtzmidt, oh my gosh, what a break. Can he beat his man? Doesn't look like he can. Wingala into Wemangatuka. Oh, Robin Hack has been found. Just poor pass outside. What an attack to get through. Shame that Luca Valtzmidt ended up being the one on the end of it to go through on goal because he definitely does not have the pace uh, that Nicolas Gonzalez does but definitely shows that we are we are at least you know pushing for that goal and we can you know make sure that you know there is no risk <laughs> of losing this tie oh there we go now just as I end that final piece oh my god I say just to end that final piece of commentary. We get Nicholas Gonzalez through and looking to to ice this tie, but completely skies that one. What a what a horrible miss right at the end of the first half. This it leaves a window open for them, which I don't like. That's that's my only concern right now. Kobel making a big save there. He actually is now signed for Borussia Dortmund uh, in the transfer window. And I think, oh, what a save. Wish he would have caught that. I think for this series, since we're going through the summer transfer window right now, I'm not going to sell players uh, who have been sold in this summer transfer window. I don't think it makes sense to do that. As, you know, 
And that's really a new season and kind of would break the timeline that we currently have here. Uh, let's take a look at some of the other results. It looks like Barcelona are winning. Monaco are winning as well. Looks like Real Sociedad. So some big games going on there. But the most important game is ours here as we look to close out Shakhtar Donetsk here in the final 45. And, you know, honestly, win the game. I think we should definitely be making an effort to at least get the win here and not, you know, stumble our way across the finish line. Oh my god, the keeper for Shakhtar has had a little bit of a nightmare there with Matteo Guendouzi. Looks like Robin Kosh can get on the end of that. No, he can't. Guendouzi has been such a good transfer into this team. Just the presence that he brings with the ball at his feet. It's crazy to think that, you know, Arsenal just, that Arteta just couldn't get him, one, to work in the team. And it's a shame his attitude just, you know, isn't there at all times. He is, he is definitely a quality talent. And it looks like when Doozy's going to hit his third goal in the tie right there. And that will definitely see this tie through. No chance now for Shakhtar Donetsk. That early goal canceled out here in the second half. And that's just, you know, a great run through by Matteo Guendouzi. who's playing in the, more in the central midfield role that I have out of the two pivots behind the front four. But look at that. Just wonderful finish. Keeper with no chance. And we are clear through to the next round of the Europa League. That is the end of the game. One all at home after a 4-1 result. Probably a little bit of a disappointing second leg. But that's all we really had to do to get through to the next round of the Europa League. The round of 32 is done. And we move to the round of 16. So a lot of big competition. Barcelona are definitely going to be a team that we want to avoid in the Europa League. They are going to be such a threat. Let's take a look at our emails here real quick. Match rescheduled and a little bit of money for next season. Always good. As you can see there, we are still five points off the Champions League spots. And with Dortmund there, it's going to be hard to catch them. Let's take a look if we can see who we have actually in the next round of the Europa League. We have Benfica, a very, very tough tie there, but we have three games in the league before we can get to that. So we're going to finish those league games off in this episode, and then we will get into the next round of the Europa League. All right, we are at Dusseldorf here. Definitely a team that's on the lower end of the table here. We're going with Endo at the back. Um, obviously, we didn't have enough money to buy a really, really good defensive replacement so we're going to go with endo in defense here Juventus comes in and then otherwise it is the full starting team let's actually see if Dusseldorf made some big signings uh Sabotka is in there um doesn't look like they made any crazy good signings so definitely a team that we should be beating and if we're going to make the Champions League losing games or even dropping points in games like this is not good enough and the focus is on the Bundesliga. Live action coming up. It's Fortuna Dusseldorf up against Stuttgart. Well, thank you, Derek. Must be. And a goal. I tried to pass that back to the keeper. I swear to God. That was supposed to go to the keeper. Oh, my goodness. I probably shouldn't even have tried to go to the keeper there. And, well, that is a quite... That is a quite for, an unfortunate goal. I had so many passing options. Why... I wanted to go to the keeper, and then I could switch it over to the left, but... Well, <laughs> there it is. That is one goal down already in a game that we really need to win to be qualifying for the Champions League. Oh my god, Nicholas Gonzalez has hit the post there. That could have been the chance to get us back level in this game after that terrible mistake. And wow, Dusseldorf have definitely got off lucky with that one. It looks promising. Oh, what a goal, and that's going to be offside. It looks like Gonzalez just a little early off of the Dodo cross. Another chance we have to pull that one back. But this has been a tight game. Dusseldorf have put a lot of pressure on an endo at the back instead of a real defender. It's certainly a challenge at times, but... You know, definitely it feels like a game we're, we've grown into and should hopefully be able to get at least a goal back in the second half. 
Oh, it looks like we're going to get a goal potentially back before halftime. And the keeper has stopped Frank there. Unfortunate. Come on, let's get this in. Come on, get a goal. Make up for this. Oh, my God. What a game this is going to be going into the second half. It's just not going my way here. One-on-one -on -one with the keeper, Frank, has been stopped. I'm going to make a change here. I'm going to bring on Gwenduzi here. Mumangala. Actually, no, we'll play him like this here. Hopefully, that gives me a little bit more attacking power in the midfield. And we can get... Uh, we got to get two goals here in the second half. There's no, no debating that. Oh, my God. How has the keeper stopped that on Gonzalez? There is no way. Wow, what a save, and it's looking at closer and closer like this might not be the result we want if the keeper's going to be making saves like that. And what a disappointing result. 1-0 loss here to Dusseldorf, and they just, we just couldn't beat the keeper today. It just is what it is, as you can see. Six shots, you know, maybe on the balance they deserved uh, a win or at least a point, but definitely felt like... We had been pushing on and maybe deserved something out of that game. It looks like Endo probably talking about playing at center back. Yep, but, you know, that that's just due to fitness here. Leverkusen, a big game coming up here. If we win this game, we can get into Europa League spot. And if our Leverkusen is a tough opponent, we do have to rotate a little bit. But, you know, we got to take these chances when we can get them. All right, now we have the game against Bayer Leverkusen. Only one change here. Tommy comes in. Uh, Gwenduzi and Mangala in midfield. And this is the team. Harvey Barnes, Eli Ali, Balotti, Danilo is in midfield. Balarabi, Dilly Blend is now at the back with Sanchez. Wow, this is a very, very quality team. But we are at home and, you know, it, at this point after the, uh, after the result in the last game, there is no excuse. We have to go out and win this game here against Leverkusen. We've had some trouble with them in the past, but... Time to forget about all those, you know, forget about all those mistakes right now and get this win. Oh, Gonzalez is through here. Oh, my God, and the keeper makes another save. How many times am I going to get in these one-on-one -on -one positions with the keeper and never score? It just feels like the second half of this episode is going to be super cursed today. Oh, what a tackle by Guendouzi. In the midfield. Frank, how has the keeper stopped that one again? Oh my god, how many times? Just how many times am I not going to be able to beat the keeper? Should I have sweated it again? Like, what the hell am I supposed to do in these scenarios? This just shows how little I played FIFA. It feels like in the last few days. Or I guess in the last month. Just can't put these easy chances away. Oh my god, what a chance for Gonzalez there. We'll bring Stenzel on here just to preserve some of Dodo's stamina. He cuts inside and he beats the keeper. Oh, the keeper actually gets a hand to it there at the very end. And it looks like we're still, looks like our chances at a goal are running out here. But we are definitely on the attack and have been looking for that great opportunity to get us a goal. And Robin Hack, another miss there by Robin Hack. How many of these opportunities are just going to go to waste? At least this will turn into a draw. But we are starting to run out of games to win, to move up at that table for the Champions League spots with these games. Just not good enough here, the back half of the season. Just shows that we have so much still to improve with this team. This team has scored goals for fun at times. But then at other times, just can't get anything going. In the, especially in these games against teams like Bayer Leverkusen at home. And there it is. The game is over. A nil-nil draw against Bayer Leverkusen. And it looks, it's starting to look closer and closer like the Europa League will be our only chance at the Champions League. Because it just hasn't been good enough here in these games. <sighs> As you can see there, we're still only two points off the Europa League spots, but um, it's still, you know, it's it's going to be tough to get there uh, to the Champions League at this point, especially with all these clubs that jump just for the Europa League. So the final game of the episode will be against Werder Bremen 
And if we take a look at the calendar, then we'll have the Benfica tie in the month of March. And this, you know, that's going to be an important, important competition now as we look to make the Champions League through that route rather than the, uh, the rather than our league standing. All right, this is the final game of the episode against Verda Bremen. The pick clash, okay, the the kick clash wasn't too bad. I was about to complain about it, but Senzel comes in and Waldschmidt Waldschmidt comes in. Otherwise, we have to go pretty strong here to get some wins. Toprak in the defense. Lewis Cook. It looks like Sidibe. So uh, Verda Bremen has some quality. It looks like they've sold off some of their players though. So it won't be as tough as a team uh, as we've played in the past, but, you know, still going to be a difficult game. They've got some quality in there. And given our form, you know, nobody nobody is a light. <laughs> There's no easy challenges at the moment. And there it is. Wemegatuka puts it in. It was it? You know what? Our offense wasn't going to be stifled for too too long. Wemegatuka finds that pass, and we are up one nil. It's going to be a tough, tough end of the season. We're going to have so many fixtures to play with this team because of the Europa League. But Luka Valtzman finds Wemegatuka, and if we can make this game a win early on and start rotating some players out to rest for those games, then I am all for it. We have had to play. You know, some very, very tough games here the last little while, down to the very, very end, which has, you know, been unfortunate for the situation stamina-wise, but great early goal there. And there it is, Nicolas Gonzalez, 2-0 before halftime, and that second goal should hopefully give us enough to get the three points here. A tough run of form for us at the end of this episode, but it looks like we're going to end it off on a positive note with that. Mangala, look at that, just great work in there. Finds that final pass from Wemingatuka, and that goal, just a pure finish, 21 goals for Nicolas Gonzalez, and we get to take him up at halftime now to preserve him for the cha Champions League. I wish we were in the Champions League for the Europa League tie. Oh my god, I went for the bicycle kick there against the keeper. Look at, just look at this. It's <laughs> just the keeper makes the initial save, go for it. I don't know how he managed to get that one even on target. But what an opportunity that is. Can we get that one in? No, we cannot. But despite we made quite a few substitutions here to preserve Sano, we have done quite well to limit Verde Bremen's opportunities. And we've even, you know, kept creating them ourselves, so... You know, good omens here for the future. And that is the end of the game. Pretty tight fought second half. But a second half that, you know, we definitely were okay with as we pull out a nice 2 0 win away from home, making up for some of the poor results we've had. Now we go into the Europa League round of 16 against Benfica. The home leg is first, which gives me an interesting. Uh, dilemma on how I want to play this, whether I want to just defend and play for a win in the away leg. But that is going to be the end of today's episode. Let's take a look at the table real quick and then we'll take a look at the, um, what is it? We'll take a look at the other games going on in the Europa League. We're now in the Europa League spots. We're back to five points behind, um, Dortmund there, I mean, that w a point winning against Leverkusen would have been very, very nice there as they're within direct competition of us. But if we can hold on to the Europa League spots, I think that would be potentially good enough for, for this season, especially if we make a run here in the Europa League. And these are the other ties going on. Sevilla versus Villarreal, Arsenal, Napoli, another, you know, repeat tie there. Lille versus Chelsea. We have Barcelona, Lazio, Ajax, Atalanta, Roma versus Bilbao. And Real Sociedad versus Monaco. A lot of big games in the Europa League coming up. So next round is going to be probably a step too far for us. But if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like rating and subscribe. I'm going to do a channel update at some point, hopefully in the next week. Talk about the rest of this series as well as you know, other videos I want to do to bring more regular content. Because these videos take a while. Uh, a little longer uh, than I would like for them to do. Um... Uh, with the schedule that I have with work and stuff. So 
we keep an eye out for that. I will, you know, get back to you guys soon. And as always, have a wonderful day.